So this week I cannot count the number of followers that I have lost and I cannot count the number of people that I have unfollowed on social media. So therefore I will tell you that if you do not want to hear a conversation today that addresses some of what is going on right now, even if it's in my own kind of clumsy way, um, you should go. Gosh, you know, I filmed this whole video and I realized that I only mentioned racism and social injustices by word later in the video. So I'm going to say right now that this is about us, our community, those of us trying to recover from hypothalamic amenorrhea and possibly overtraining syndrome, how we can address our health concerns and the issues of racism, 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 and social injustice as it exists right now. I would like to take a moment just to acknowledge some things right at the start of this video. I am learning like many other people. I am trying very hard to understand how to be better and how to do better. I am not going to provide a laundry list of the ways in which I'm trying to educate myself because that would center me on all of this and that's not the point. This niche where I direct my work is a very specific kind of group and I feel as though we need to kind of acknowledge that. So the people watching this channel, myself included of course, we are a privileged group of people. We are mostly white, we are mostly women. We, most of us, do not have any way to relate to what is going on in the world right now. In general, we have to acknowledge that endurance sports has a diversity problem. Outdoor sports are not diverse. Trail running, ultra marathon, triathlon, these are not really diverse sports. There's racism in these sports just as there is racism everywhere. I tried to research a little bit more about African Americans who participate in ultra marathon just just to get started and of course you know there were like three articles so you have Myrna Valerio you have Corey Waltering and of course you have Errol the Rocket Jones who I was fortunate enough to meet some years ago you also have Joe Gray there's there's not a lot of color out there another thing we need to acknowledge is the fact that inherently in the issues of hypothalamic amenorrhea and overtraining syndrome and the things that I talk about are it's privilege I'm gonna say some things that are truths about how we got here and if they are offensive to you I don't know what to tell you how we got here on this channel is because we've had leisure time enough to pursue a sport to the point of blowing up that in itself is privilege having the choice to restrict food or to restrict certain food types is also indicative of privilege we don't live in a state of food insecurity we create our own we also have to acknowledge the fact that the ability to seek medical care, maybe the services of a nutritionist or someone else to advise us going through the things that we're going through also suggests a, a good amount of privilege. And this one, you're not gonna like me saying this, but the ability that we have to focus on something relatively trivial, I said it, relatively trivial, is privilege. Am I condemning our sports? Am I saying that we shouldn't participate in them? No, that's not gonna help anybody. But what is gonna help is to acknowledge how and why we can and do participate in them. But really the purpose of this video came from you, came from people emailing me this week and clients, people reaching out to me on social media, asking me what I understand. I, I do, I understand this is a real question. And the question is, with everything that's going on right now, how can it be that I can focus on recovery? Recovery from hypothalamic amenorrhea and overtraining syndrome. How can I focus on how much I'm exercising and how much I'm eating in this particular moment when everything seems to be burning down? And so I just wanna take a minute to talk, to talk us through this. So in my opinion, it's okay to wake up maybe one morning this week and decide that, gosh, maybe I've been overly fixated on my sport, my body, my body shape, my ability to compete in a certain sport, my leisure time, what I'm doing with my time. Maybe I should be embarrassed for what seems to be an inordinate amount of fixation on, on what's going on over here. It's also okay if you realize that your personal struggles might be less important than you thought. And by the way, I don't mean not real, I mean less important. Maybe you're struggling with prioritizing 
those things right now and it's okay if you decide that what you personally have been going through is not as important as others. But I want to caution you against something here. I want to caution you against feeling a sense of guilt because guilt is linked with shame and that kind of stuff leads to inaction. Right now the last thing we need is more inaction. If we really want to do something, we need to be healthy to do that in body and mind. We need you to be fully functioning so that you can go ahead and do the things that need to be done in order to make this world a better place, now more than ever. When this crisis has subsided, I mean the inflammatory moment that we're in right now, I'm not talking about the overall overriding crisis of racism in America, and beyond by the way, and definitely beyond. <laughs> I wanna tell you that when we are moving through this, our own personal struggles are not going to magically evaporate. We can reprioritize, but we cannot ignore them. We have to deal with our personal struggles because if we don't, they will steal us away. They will come back and they will steal us away from going out there and doing the good work we need to do. We want to be different. I, I want to be different as we work through all of this, but I can't say my struggles are shallow and unimportant if they impede me from going out there and being a better person. And I'm pretty confident that we can hold space for both our health struggles and the greater issues of social injustice, racism, it's not one or the other. I believe we can do both. And I would argue that freeing up the brain space that you're spending thinking about your training too much and maybe not eating enough will allow you to be fully functioning in the world in a better way. It is our duty at this point to remember that we are here to be in service of others. We are here to be in service of each other. It's really the only choice we have now. In the description box of this video, I am going to include a bunch of resources that can help us in our efforts to be better people. I am using them myself and I encourage you to look through them as well. The goal of this video today was just to remind you of how important it is that you remain focused on the task at hand which is to get your body and your mind healthy so that you can be an ally, so that you can be educated, so that you can go ahead and learn ways that you can be anti-racist, learn ways that you can help make this world a better place, learn ways that you can be in service. I hope this video was helpful to you today. I hope that it encourages you to continue um, on the path. If I can help you in any way, you know you can always email me a case of the gels at gmail.com. I've tried to close this video like 700 different ways and I just, I'm failing. Be safe wherever you are. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Please consider checking out the links below. Donate, educate, advocate. I think that's all I have today.